Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That's So Po, and today I am bringing you week 9 of my 2019 reads. This week I finished three amazing reads, absolutely wonderful books that I would highly recommend to anyone. The first book I finished was You Can't Touch My Hair by Phoebe Robinson, which was a recommendation from my husband, and I listened to it on audiobook. I absolutely loved this. Phoebe Robinson is a comedian, and I hadn't heard anything by her before, but I definitely will seek out more by her. This was so funny and also so moving and insightful. It's a memoir of her experiences growing up and being a black woman in the US. It covers a lot of really serious and deep topics of racism and sexism, but in a very humorous way. She uses a lot of pop culture references and a lot of sarcasm and just so much humor to look at what really is kind of a ridiculous situation. She talks about a lot of the microaggressions that are directed at her, um, things of just really weird assumptions that people make or being ignored by uh, people in the service industry, or even just things that aren't anybody's fault, but are very problematic, like her hair. The fact that in order for her hair to seem in some way socially acceptable, she has to spend hours and hours doing things to it, which in general is taking time out of her life. So there's a lot of exploration of what these microaggressions and constant issues that take up her time and energy feel like, as well as just sort of exploring why is the system like this and, you know, what sort of role models do we have out there in media uh, that show us we can be different. So I really liked those aspects. I also really liked her exploration of what does it mean to be an angry black woman? Because the truth is, if you have all these microaggressions addressed towards you, you do feel angry sometimes, but when you're not allowed to voice that frustration and anger or else you're dismissed as simply being an angry black woman, it can be very silencing. And so I really liked how she addressed a lot of these very heavy issues with a lot of humor. She was so, so funny and I just laughed the whole time I was listening to this while also crying at certain parts because it was just so heart-wrenching how frustrating those experiences were for her. I really related to her on a lot of the experiences she had just growing up in the same era that I did um, while not at all having experiences with so many of the microaggressions and difficulties that she faced. So it was both an eye-opening and a very um, connectable book for me, and I, I absolutely recommend it to anybody. Uh, the only thing that was a little bit difficult for me was the pop culture references were so um, above my head most of the time. I just didn't know a lot of the people who were being referred to, so I couldn't quite grasp what analogy was being made. So that was a little bit hard for me, but everything else was just amazing, and I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I finished was Between the World and Me by ta Coates, and this was another book that was recommended to me by my husband. Um, he had recommended the audiobook, he loves audiobooks, but I had started to listen to it and realized that I needed to switch to the ebook because the material was so thought-provoking and dense in a lot of ways. It's a very short book, but there's so much content that I just wasn't able to process all the thoughts I was having about it as I was listening to it. So I switched to the ebook format and I ended up highlighting so many different passages in the book, even though, I mean, it's a library book, so I had to return it, but it was just so impactful. Um, this is also a memoir, not a comedy though at all. It is a very serious look at the experience that ta Coates had growing up as a black boy in not the safest neighborhoods in the U.S. and also talking, it's directed at his son who's growing up in a very different experience but also is facing many of the same systemic issues that ta Coates himself did when he was a child and it really tears apart a lot of these ideas of what it's like for young black men to grow up and what their choices are or really lack of choices. It just really takes a deep look at the cost of creating a system and an environment where 
black boys have so little power over their own bodies. There's a big focus on that ability to have safety, to have control of your own body, and the knowledge that at any time somebody could decide that you no longer get to have control of your body. Um, and the ways that people cope with that, the um, violence against others as a way of somehow claiming your own power, or the complete abandonment of your old neighborhood or things like that trying to merge with the American dream so that you can get out of that system. It's just a very thought-provoking, very insightful, and really almost just devastating read, but so worthwhile and so powerful. And I think especially what really spoke to me is Tanahazi Coates was talking about how this constant knowledge that if you make just even the slightest misstep, then you may be sacrificing your life in the system that we have. And especially he talks about um, Michael Brown and Trayvon Martin and a lot of these boys who were killed by police officers. Um, and he had some people in his own life who were similarly killed by police officers. And just that fear that if you make the slightest misstep, you're going to lose your life. Um, and how that shapes the way you see the world and how it is such a consuming, um, overriding knowledge that you have to keep in mind at all times that you can't focus on other things. It's very difficult to move past that. And it reminded me a lot of, um, I read uh, last year a book about feminism called Delusions of Gender in which there have been studies looking at how simply reminding women that they are women by having them check their gender before taking a test lowers their test scores because they're suddenly aware of all of the stereotypes and the expectations placed on them. So if such a small thing as just being reminded of your gender can influence test scores, what is the effect, the, the enormous impact of being afraid that you're going to not survive or or have your freedom taken away from you or just somehow be unsafe that at all times you have to keep that in mind and similarly it reminds me of the book that i had just finished with um phoebe robinson talking about always having to be aware of you know the angry black lady stereotype and how she couldn't um, you know, show anger or else it would be perceived poorly. So this book was a really nice counterpoint to Phoebe Robinson's book and also just such a great book. It's only 150 pages, but I think I need to get a physical copy so I can take notes on it. It, it is just really impactful and I would very much recommend this to anybody. I gave it five out of five stars. And the last book that I finished this week was The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. This was amazing. I had heard so many people talking about this book and how beautiful it was, and I'd heard people recommend listening to it on audiobook. I 100% get behind that. I listen to it on audiobook, and I'm really not a huge audiobook fan, but if it's done right, it's so worthwhile, and this one is done right. So this is read by Elizabeth Acevedo herself, and it is so perfect. It is the story of Xiomara, who is a 15-year-old Dominican girl who's growing up in Harlem and faces a lot of constraints, a lot of silencing, a lot of um, shaming and people who are judging her. Her parents are very strictly religious. Her community is also perhaps a bit sexist. Um, there's a lot of sexual harassment that happens to her. And throughout this all, she is trying so hard to deal with all of her pent up feelings, all of her words that she wants to express. She has so much to say, but people aren't listening. She's being silenced. She's being told not to speak up. And she explores all of these feelings and the sort of coming of age story in a beautiful, beautiful way. The story is told throughout a series of journal entries, which are written as poems. And it's just such beautiful prose, such amazing 
feeling and emotion in every single in every single journal entry and the story is just so gripping you completely feel drawn in to her life and her perspective it's absolutely amazing just a beautiful piece of fiction and absolutely beautiful in terms of also addressing some of these issues of sexism and the experience of growing up as a young girl in sort of a repressive community. So I highly recommend this book to anybody. Highly recommend you read it on audiobook because it was such a powerful experience. I gave this five out of five stars and I would totally listen to this again. So that wraps up my week nine reads. It was an amazing reading week and just in general so far 2019 has been 100% thrilling, so much better than I've ever had in the past. I think reading more widely and also paying attention to what other people are talking about and what books are highly recommended is just leading to really great reading experiences. So. I had a great week. I hope you guys had a wonderful reading week as well. Definitely share with me if you have read any of these books or if you have anything that you've read that you found similar or that you think I would like based on these. I'd love to hear your recommendations.